Greetings, unsettled souls. Sam I B. Ganji, freelancer for uh, Lasting News, Wits News. You might know me from the Conservative Daily Post. Teddy Stick, various other places, uh, jail. No, I'm kidding. Welcome aboard, friends. Um, Dunce Cap of the Month show. Guaranteed to be full of the biggest idiots. And, and just because I expect this to be shared in unusual places, we got lucky. Um, the only person who, you know, spent Valentine's Day with me, the Invisible Man, uh, he's here from England. Now, if you're new to the show, when we get to this section of the show, it's important that you understand that the characters in this show normally don't come. They're there for Friday the 13th, Halloween. However, Valentine's Day, you know, I had to do something. I had nobody, so I spent it with the Invisible Man, and he's going to talk us through one of the uh, one of the stories that come up in this series. And uh, again, Dunce Cap of the Month show, I'm going to get you started before he's on here. And again, remember, all of this is not only listener-supported, but it's listener supported by you when you donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. All right, guys, first of three stories. We go to screen share for our Media Speaks friends on YouTube. I can run my own computer, that is, which is questionable. Prison Planet, Paul Joseph Watson. Old photo of suit soot-covered miners in racist blackface, quote, says offended idiot. Now, this is dumb for a few reasons. And, and again, this is just getting started on the stupidity, of course, that is the Dunce Cap of the Month show. Um, being a coal miner pretty much meant lung disease, sickness, a life of mediocrity, at best, constant risk of dying underground. The poor did it. The black poor, the white poor, particularly the Irish white poor. They were all poor together. There was no privilege, so to speak. They were all equally miserable. And one of the few joys they had was going to the pub after work, going to the local bar, and enjoying themselves. No, 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 not in today's world. You don't dare. The other dumb thing about it is the person who is about to call it racist admits that he knows, historically speaking, that this wasn't racist. Okay. So, in other words, he knows he's wrong, but he feels that it should be taken down because it could look like it was wrong, even though it wasn't wrong. It was never in a wrong context. See why we call it the Dunce Cap of the Month show yet? An opinion columnist for the Arizona Republic newspaper penned an article in which he claimed that an old photograph of coal miners covered in soot was racist because it reminded him of offensive blackface. Yes, really. In a piece entitled Phoenix Restaurant Says This is a Photo of Coal Miners But I See Offensive Blackface, Rashad Thomas relates the story of how he was triggered after seeing the photograph hanging on the wall in the downtown Phoenix bar. Now, one of the reasons you tune into this show is that I, I've gotten rather good over the years at predicting just how insane things can possibly be. And if this, if this outlook at all is embraced by anyone whatsoever, then you're going to find people that may have been attacked by someone who happened to wear Nike shoes. And at that the, the whole office won't be allowed to wear Nike shoes because somebody in the office was attacked by somebody in Nike shoes. And they know that this wasn't the attacker, but however, they do feel the need. They feel that need to have them not worn. You're right. I know that sounds ludicrous. Okay. I know it sounds off, but listen, this is where we're at. Despite his friends telling him it's coal miners at a pub after work, Thomas demanded to speak to a manager before he told someone he describes as a white restaurant owner that he found the photograph offensive because he felt that it resembled blackface, which it wasn't. Thomas even directly admits that the photograph shows coal miners, faces covered in soot, but then ludicrously asserts that 
context doesn't matter, only his feelings being hurt. Now, do you see where my Nike analogy, hello, Jonathan, Susan, Benny, David, and Liz, do you see where my Nike analogy is going yet? Soon, you might even be able to sue somebody because they reminded you of somebody that did something horrible to you. There's no limit to the, the stupidity that can happen once the, once the genie's out of the bottle here. He then goes on to spout a, a series of pretentious platitudes, such as, in art, everyone sees something different, to justify forcing the bar to take down the photograph. After claiming that he is discriminated against because of his color, Thomas asserts at the downtown Phoenix restaurant, my concern that the photograph of men in blackface was a threat to me when my face, my voice was being ignored. And the article goes on and on and on and on. But we saw this with Mary Poppins. I don't know how many of you had seen the article, but... Uh, the joke of the movie was that a high-class and very proper Mary Poppins was not only partying with chimney sweeps, which would have been like a, a very high-class maid uh, or a, a butler in a very well-to-do house partying with the local drunk, but when she, instead of doing her makeup all proper, she scrubs dirt into her face, which is something that someone who is proper would never, ever do. That was the joke of the movie. There have been people that says the fact that she wiped it into her face was a sign of the racism in Mary Poppins. And speaking of English, friends, we are going to get to the second story here. And as promised, I said I was going to let you meet uh, the person who I hung out with here on a, on on a Valentine's Day. Come on, come on in, come on in. As you can see clearly, yep, keep coming, keep coming. Good. As you can see, it's the Invisible Man. Let me make sure you can see on all cameras here. And uh, he's joined us, thankfully, for the show. Um, I don't know. Can you see them here? There we go. There we go. Let me scoot you in. Can you scoot in? Oh, perfect. Okay. Now, for those of you that don't know, The Invisible Man is, if regular viewers know, for every holiday, The Invisible Man is from England. Yes, that is true. It's so nice to be back. It's great to see you as well. Looks good, doesn't he? Um, I called a bunch of us. Hey, want to go out for Valentine's Day? Nobody. Just, just me and The Invisible Man. So how you been? His little black book is as small as a concert flyer. Yes, yes, as, as thin as a concert flyer. Thank you, Invisible Man. All right, friends, what I want to do here is I want to talk about the, the new weapon, of course, the new, the new thing to be terrified of, of course, hammers. Oh, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. As you can see, the, clearly the Invisible Man was somewhat upset there. Don't panic, don't panic, it's fine. We're just talking in the UK. They decided that if you go into the store, and you're going to make a purchase of, say, knives and a hammer, then uh, he, he's, he's clearly triggered, triggered by the word hammer. So we're, we're going to try to avoid it. We're gonna, uh, we'll try to avoid that for a minute. Now, now, let me read this to you before you think I'm nuts here. Um, I'm not talking to myself. Sons of Liberty Media, total control, purchase a hammer, get designated as a terrorist. Oh, I, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I keep doing that. All right, so we're, here we go. If you need a hammer for any re reason, the United Kingdom's counterterrorism policy unit will consider you a potential terrorist. They are asking that anyone who sees someone purchase something suspicious, something like a hammer, they should report it to it. <laughs> they should report it to officials. Sorry, sorry, Bob. Sorry, sorry. Buying a, one of those is suspicious and is potentially an indicator of criminal activity, according to the tweet below. It was posted by the UK Counterterrorism Police Force. Police Office, excuse me. Information from you, capitalized. The public has helped foil terrorist plots in the UK. 
Last year, 22% of inf the information we received assisted live investigations. If you see something that doesn't look right, look again, act, and report it. And when you click on it, it says it's hard to see in the Twitter photo, but the guy looking at the hammer... <laughs> I'm never going to get through this report. A guy looking through... You'll be all right. Puts one of them in the basket. That's apparently supposed to be a context clue that he's maybe a very bad person, if not a terrorist. The UK has borderline comical campaigns going on, trying to convince young people not to carry knives around. According to Reason, there's actually a very logic, this, they wrote that wrong, a very logically and likely explanation for needing some knives, or for that matter, needing a hammer. Um, you, you, you never know. It says uh, he could be a chef that is doing some repairs around the kitchen. And it then goes on to list all of the different ways that somebody can be considered a terrorist already. Uh, there's a quote here. They, the counterterrorism police, tried to blow off the idea that people are going to end up reporting innocent activity with the statement of reporting suspicious activity won't ruin lives, but it might save them. Do they really think that there are no consequences consequences to being investigated as a potential terrorist for again buying buying common things that a person would need? Law enforcement in the United Kingdom goes after and prosecutes people on the content of their tweets for heaven's sake. These investigations would most likely upend the lives of their subjects. You're right. This ad isn't mockable. It's horrifying. For the love of God, do not go through life being suspicious of common daily occurrences. And be very wary of law enforcement or any law enforcement organization that tells you to treat people with who record and record the, who record their behavior of law enforcement as potential threats. That is from reason. Now, I, I wanted to, I'll ask you, I, I wanted to get your opinion on this. Uh, the, the hammer I have could be particularly worrisome to some people, and I just needed to know uh, if, if you thought this would be a problem. Do, do you mind terribly if I if I uh, if I bring out my hammer? Oh, uh, uh, let me, just, let me just, you, you can make it. Okay, now look, it's a different kind of hammer. You see, there's a hatchet on one end. Oh, oh, he's gone. He he took off. Well, anyway, I you know this hammer I found, but if you swing it, you know, of course it could be it could you know I don't know you could suicide yourself. But he left without even saying goodbye. All right, friends, uh, that that's the Invisible Man live uh, live from England. I uh, got you, friends. What you're waiting for? The winner. All oh, you hear the music. Dum 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 dee dum dee die. Even dumber than our visit from the Invisible Man and the great acting that came with it is the story that takes us to the dumps cap of the month. Now, it's almost, I wanted to give it to the last story, but mailing things to the UK can get mind-blowingly expensive. Although, if you'd like to help pay for something like that, I would appreciate it at the correct views of hotmail.com through PayPal. Now, this is from the Free Beacon, and uh, Kamala Harris. Oh, the, the rising star of the left, guaranteed to uh, want Donald Trump in the debates, right? Well, not so quick there, Sparky. No reason to have assault weapons in a civil society. This is by Andrew Kugel. And again, I'm going to go to screen share for all of you now that you're not seeing the Invisible Man anymore. During a CNN-sponsored town hall in Iowa Monday night, Senator Kamala Harris, Democrat, California, said there is no reason to have assault weapons in a civil society. And the good thing is that nothing like the L.A. riots or nothing like Antifa or nothing like uh, the, the, the uh, horrible Ferguson nightmare. Fortunately, none of that ever happens in America, so it's always a civil society. Uh, quote, we have, we have got to have smart gun laws in this country. Okay, let's, let's see what there are, Ms. Harris. We've got to stop buying this false choice. You can be in favor of the Second Amendment and also understand that there is no reason in a civil society 
that we have assault weapons around the communities that can kill babies and police officers, Harris said. Of course, it can also kill rapists. It can also kill kidnappers, child molesters, home invaders, serial killers, other killers. Yeah, you know, just officers and babies. They have these guns that only kill officers and babies, I guess. Uh, we need to get rid of those, along with maybe the hammer. No, I lost my only friend. Harris, one of the many Democrats running in the 2020 presidential primary, held a town hall in Iowa where a pastor asked what she could do to tackle gun violence. As you know, the, gun, the rates of gun violence in America are astronomically higher than in other Western democracies. What do you think can be done, and what would you be prepared to do to address the problem of gun violence, the pastor asked. <clears throat> never mind the fact that historically it's one of the reasons that America was never invaded. Many people don't know this, but if Russia or China decided they wanted to invade the United States, in theory, there's not much short of what could be all-out nuclear war that would prevent that, if such a thing would ever happen. And many leaders have said it throughout history. It's very easy to confirm this. The fact that America is so heavily armed, aside from just the peacekeepers and the National Guard or the Army or whatever, the branches of the military, that it would be suicide to do such a thing. Let's erase that from history. Let's listen to this great genius continue, shall we? Something like universal background checks, which, of course, we know many, many tyrannical cultures throughout history, governments, I should say, have used background checks to take the weapons away from the people. Am I saying Trump would do that? Am I even saying Harris would do that? No, but if you allow that to be a precedent, the background checks, sooner or later, the odds are you're going to get somebody from one of the two parties, and the way they keep morphing between what they really are, it could be either one, or a third party that decides they do want to use background checks to start limiting certain kinds of guns. Already we're seeing people that have registered guns which they want to make illegal now, they're not even being grandfathered in. So there is a reason to be concerned about background checks. Don't zone out because I made one of my best dunce caps ever, you're going to want to see it. She's going to get it mailed to her, for those of you that don't know. She said it makes perfect sense that you might want to Someone can buy, this is really what she said, that you might want to, someone can buy the, a gun that can kill another human being, because, you know, some guns don't. You might want to know they have been convicted of a felony where they committed violence, Harris responded. Because, of course, if someone committed a felony, they're going to buy a gun legally anyway. Sure. So a background check's going to help. A felon already can't own a gun in most instances. So they're going to apply legally without Harris. Yeah, they're going to do that and send themselves back to prison. No, they're going to buy it off the street, which could be potentially dangerous, which is why it would be good for many of us to be armed. Harris invoked the 2011 shooting of Representative Gabby Giffords, saying she believed members of Congress should have responded by enacting gun control laws out of self-interest. But she didn't mention the shooting of Stephen Scalise, representative, of course, of Louisiana, Republican. Talked about Sandy Hook. Here's what I think. I think that somebody should have required, and this is going to sound very harsh, I think somebody should have required all of those members of Congress to go in a room, in a locked room, no press, nobody else, and look at the autopsy photograph of the babies. Why don't... Uh, why doesn't Kamala Harris go into a place where she can view the, num the photographs of perfectly healthy people who weren't raped, who weren't murdered, who don't have autopsy photos because guns save their lives. And I want to get to another point before I show you the award and before I show you the hat, which is amazing this month, and I suck at them. Um, I want to point out why you would need a number of bullets. You keep hearing this come up. Why would you need so many bullets? Violent flash mobs are growing in frequency, both in America and the Western world. Flash mobs where 20, 30 people storm a store at the same time and steal everything out of it. 
I had somebody say to me, well, you shouldn't talk about that because a lot of those videos show black people doing it and it makes you look like you want to kill black people. I have no desire to kill anybody. And you know what? The store owner was black. So don't give me this. Large numbers of anyone. I don't care if they are white Canadians. If you have 30 or 40 people stealing everything in your store, laughing about it, running out of the store with it, what are you going to do as a store owner with six damn bullets? I don't care about color. I would like to see white people armed, black people armed. I would like to see more people armed because an armed Society is a polite society. When I walk to the store, I live in 44703. If you don't know what it is, it's a good place to die. When I walk to the convenience store, when I see somebody who has a gun on their hip, which is legal in Ohio, I'm happy. He didn't show up in the middle of the night to kill a handful of people standing outside the gas station, freezing to death, paying through the window because, you know, he felt like being caught on video and going to prison that night. I'm happy he's there. I don't care what color he is. I'm glad he's legally armed and he has a weapon. That way I have a better chance of not getting paralyzed. Again, and that's always been my big fear. If somebody shoots me dead, they shoot me dead. But paralyzing me would terrify me. All right, friends. Here we go. Listen, now this is a great hat. You're going to want to really enjoy this hat. First of all, of course, dunce. Now, again, one of the better ones I've made. We'll start with my, my, my headstone here. We got the little shadow on the cross. Notice that? Yeah. All right. And here's what it says. R.I.P. Here lies the body of Mr. Grot. He was mugged by 12 and had six shots. He gave them hell, but what he got was six feet down with body rot. Um, here we've got an ambulance. That's a, that's a pretty decent ambulance, I would say, wouldn't you say? Yes, I would think so. All right. Um, we have a guy with we have a guy with six bullets jumped by ten people. Uh, yep. And then this is my best one. Okay, here you have a little tiny wee wee guy with his gun, and he says, "Oh yeah, Kamala Harris says it's enough." And here you have a very large, a whole number of people, just like gang running. Come on, come on down, boys. He has six shots. Ha, ha, ha. And there they are, of course, standing with their weapons ready to pummel him into the ground, which, of course, is Mr. Grot. So I have that. And then I have here the actual award, which I'm going to hit screen share. Then I'm going to show you guys. It will also be on the comment line of the show. So don't panic. It's not like you're not going to see it. You'll be seeing it. I want to remind you one more time that this is listener supported and mailing out the dunce caps, that can be kind of expensive. And those of you that donate, those of you who have done that religiously uh, monthly at the correct views of hotmail.com through PayPal, you guys are an absolute lifesaver. Please continue to donate. Things have been very slow in the donation category. All right, friends. And uh, there it is, the award. And as it comes up, friends. I'm just going to go ahead and stick it in the uh, comment line, like I said, as well. And uh, it says, the dunce cap of the month goes to Senator Kamala Harris for saying that assault weapons are not needed in a civil society. Oh, now what have I done? I've moved my, my, I've moved my mouse live on air. I have moved my mouse and clicked my picture off. Don't you love live video? The dunce cap of the month goes to Senator Kamala Harris for saying that assault weapons are not needed in a civil society. Of course, I wrote, the fact that society is often quite uncivil is a truth totally lost on Harris, as is the need for many bullets, as the flash mob below proves, and there's a picture of it. For failing to understand how the world works, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month award. Now, again, friends, that is going to be sent directly to her. Just going to get that in the mail along with the hat. That's what we do. We mail out Dunce Caps. All right, friends. Uh, good night. God bless. Hope you spent Valentine's Day with somebody other than the Invisible Man. But if you didn't, I mean, clearly he took off. I haven't seen him. All I know is that, you know, I'm sorry, maybe... At the end of the day, I shouldn't have done uh, 
report that mentioned hammers so much? Oh, he is still around. Oh, I got to go. See you.